Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Morning Brew live on Brew Sports. We welcome you inside our Thursday studios as we are here at the Attention Aramedia Studios in beautiful Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We've got a great show in store for you today that we are just tickled pink that you decided to join us today. I know that I've already said as many cute things as I can to make Jamie feel uncomfortable, so I must be doing something right with my day, but... Jamie, how are we doing today? Good to see you. I'm good. Good to see you, too. <laughs> You're just sitting over there looking at me like, what are you talking about? I, pro- I really don't talk like that, I promise. But I try to either start off the show or do something most every show just to see if my co-hosts are actually paying attention to as I go on the air. Because a lot of times, like, okay, we're going on the air. And people are like, okay, I'm doing that. And then they're just like, wait, what? What are you saying? Like, So anyway, good morning, Jamie. Happy Thursday to you. A day away from Friday. Life is good. How'd your hockey thing go yesterday? I know you were uh, all gussied up looking all cute and stuff yesterday, and everyone was like, hey, on Facebook, so. (laughs) Um, It went well. Yeah. Unfortunately, we lost. Yep, five to three, but we had about 6,500 kids in the building. Holy cow. Yeah. Sounds like a very successful day in my book. Yeah, it was nice. It was good. It was good. Well, good. Well, good. Well, good. And I'm glad that... uh, it, were there any fights? That was the big thing. We were really... We yeah, were, one fight. Only one fight this only, time. Only one fight. Wasn't it? Yep. You said there was like five or something last yeah, year. Yeah, there were six last year. Only Holy five cow. this time. And only one fight in the stands between some kids. What? So, yeah. Uh-huh. Like rival schools or what was it? No, I think it was just two kids in a classroom. Two kids in a classroom that yep. were just going at it being like, no, like, she's my girl. Like, yeah, I don't really... Third graders that, are vicious. Yeah, they are. Clearly. Obviously. Yeah. Hey, so, you know, you, I gave Sam my cookie. She's clearly my girlfriend. Like, <laughs> you, you get out of here, right. Paul. I don't know. Paul. Who names a third grader Paul? I don't know. I'm just throwing names out there mm. now. Okay. But anyway, Paul really got his ass kicked. But anyway, Paul, you'll learn for next year. All right, we've got a great show in store for you today. We're going to be joined actually in studio in our second segment by our very first in-studio guest, Bill Schmidt from 105.7 The Fan. What? Crazy. He's going to help us uh, talk a little bit more. People have been requesting all of this uh, Milwaukee Brewers spring training talk and the Green Bay Packers free agency. Today is NFL free agent signing day, so of course we need to talk about that thoroughly throughout all Brew Sports programming today. Uh, So Bill is going to help us break down the Packers a little bit, maybe just some of the general big things happening in the NFL free agency world as well, too. So he'll be here in the second segment, so make sure to hang tight for that when we bring him on. But Time for the What's Brewing segment, Jamie. Uh, what is brewing in the sports world on this fine Thursday morning? Uh, lots of lots of things. Let's start with uh, maybe a little bit of Michigan basketball. Michigan basketball. So Michigan, go blue. I'm not a not I'm not a go blue kind of person. I'm a go Bucky, go Badgers, all that fun stuff. Uh, University of Michigan Wolverines are on their way to the Big Ten tournament. Uh, and they uh, got had a little bit of a scare. They did. Before they they haven't even played a game yet. Nope. Oh. It wasn't like they got scared by, like, a number 14 seed. Like, they didn't even make it out of the airport, uh, and there was already a scare, basically. But uh, the team's plane skidded off the runway during takeoff. I'm not sure how you – I think that's – isn't that kind of the whole point is to skid off the runway to fly? Yeah, that's, but I think that instead of going straight because of the winds, they went well. – that's slightly terrifying. Yeah, because the wheels don't go that I, way. I, I always feel, I always say that flying makes me a very religious person because I don't think I pray more during a day than I do when I fly. Just really? Because, I mean, I, I do you pray. You get that nervous? Right, but I mean, I mean you like, just get I'm, that I'm, nervous? I'm, yeah, like I'm a Christian. I go huh. to church, all that fun stuff. But like for some reason, there's so much uncertainty about flying. Like I, I enjoy flying. I think it's a wonderful modern convenience. Thank you to mm-hmm. whoever, thank you to the Wright brothers for inventing the airplane. But <laughs> You know, shout out to Orville there, but like you gotta, there's just so much uncertainty. You literally sit in your chair and like the plane is shaking and in what situation is something going that fast and shaking a good thing? Yeah, or that big and in the air. Exactly. If you just don't think about it, then you're fine. And that's the thing. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna pull up my book or watch something on my laptop. Great. You know, no big deal. But then, then people always like sticking their head out the window going like, oh, look, like, and then that's of course, the th- that's always, everybody has the same thought and tell me I'm not wrong on this. You look out the window, you're like, if I fell from here. Would I die? And it's like, yes. And it's like, what would I think about as I'm plummeting 35,000 feet to, the, to, to my, my impending doom? I usually don't think about that until, like, turbulence hits. And then I'm yeah, like, Yeah, usually oh. that's it. at that point, too. I'm just like, oh, gosh, it's it. This is done. <laughs> my Goodbye, is Mom. Over. I love you, Mom. And then you, like, start getting, like, your phone, like, pulled up. And you're like, okay, who can I call once I get into cell phone service right before I hit the ground? Be like, I love you. I don't think that it would pick up that fast, but you, you do you back. I would try. You, you <laughs> I think, would try. You think what you want. I don't know. Maybe I just, I, like I said, I don't not enjoy flying. I do. It's a wonderful modern convenience. I get to go You're see just my a family. Big baby. Travel. That's maybe. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'm just a big baby, Jamie. <laughs> I, I can only hope to be as man as you are one day. 
I don't know if that's a good thing or I don't not. know either. But I, <laughs> I don't know. But flying is uh, something that the Michigan University Wolverines are a little, uh, a little wary about now. But uh, nobody got hurt from what I was told and from what I've seen here, according to uh, at least CBS Chicago or NBC Chicago, that one of the first people to report this. But the team, like you said, the, the winds in the Midwest yesterday were between like 50 and 70 miles an hour. Like people were getting blown over. I tried to walk to my car and it took me 10 minutes to go 20 feet. Like yeah, I was, was all over the place basically. I felt like Michael Jackson like doing like the, like the, the lee and I was just like, Ooh. like, I felt really cool even though I wasn't trying to do it on purpose. But uh, glad to hear that they're okay and they get to compete now in the Big Ten basketball tournament. So we will definitely keep an eye uh, to see if something like this affects the players or not. Where were they flying to? Uh, Big Ten tournament is in Washington, D.C. at uh, Madison Square Garden. Uh, so we will wait, keep in it. What? Yes. Money, Jamie. That's all you need to know is money. Because the Big Ten, I mean, you know, we can have, the, we can have this conversation if we need to about, you know, why is Maryland in the Big Ten? Or why are there more than ten teams in the Big Ten? Or why is Rutgers in the Big Ten if they're not all in the same little pocket. But yes, they're playing. To, I could be completely wrong, but I almost was positive. Um, yeah, they're taking on University of Illinois in Washington, D.C. Uh, no. to open the Big Ten tournament. Right, it's in D.C.? Yes. But oh, maybe not Madison Square Garden. There I'm we sorry. go. I'm getting my, I don't know. They're going to D.C. I don't know where exactly they're playing. I forget. Horizon oh, Center. The Big uh, Big East plays at Madison Square Garden. There we go. Okay. I've heard so many. All like the basketball talks got me all turned around, honestly. Um, oh, this is interesting. This isn't sports related, but do you, do you enjoy Topper's, Topper's Pizza? I mean, at 3 a.m., for sure. Okay. Well, apparently they're closing all their locations in Chicago and Illinois as a whole. Uh -oh. I don't know why this needed to classify as all locations in Chicago and Illinois. Why not just say Topper's closes all locations in Illinois? I don't know. Maybe because Chicago sounds better. Like I suppose, but I feel like it's insinuated. If you say the statewide shutdown, yeah. I don't feel like you need to specify the city as well, too. But what do I know? I just talk for a living. All right, um, so Tim Tebow also got his first um, shot at glory yesterday. Uh, everybody has different viewpoints on what Tim Tebow did, but Tim Tebow got his first shot at being a Major League Baseball star yesterday, uh, and it didn't exactly go the way he wanted it to go. I mean, his first at-bat was rather embarrassing, Jamie. Um, he faced four pitches uh, and struck out. Some true baseball experts are saying, well, you know, that the, the final pitch that really struck him out was a bit questionable, a little, you know, low and outside, you know, shouldn't have, shouldn't have counted. Uh, he, he took a one ball as well, too. But from what I, all reports from what I've been hearing, Jamie, it was a, it was fastballs. Every single pitch was just a fastball down the middle. They weren't trying to overcomplicate it. They weren't trying to, you know, get him with a slider or any weird baseball pitches that people do nowadays. Like, they were just trying to put it down the plate, let him take a crack at it, and he just couldn't do it. Choked. Couldn't hit. I mean, do we, do we maybe just give him a little bit of a break because it was his first time at bat? You'd like, like to think so. Well, and it's such an interesting debate, and Tim Tebow is one of those polarizing figures that anybody anywhere has an opinion and can debate about for hours. Really, like, because so many people make fun of his career. So many people make fun of what he what he's done and his failures but nobody ever focuses on the charity work that he does nobody focuses on how he's never really let all his fame polarize his character how he's always just been this really good guy shout out to homeschooling go tim tebow he was homeschooled fun <laughs> fact nobody knew that uh good morning everybody as well too shooting in here on facebook liz greg uh brew ian ian says he's flying flying friday by the way so good luck ian the wind will slow down i'm sure you'll be fine by that time i say ian's going to be in the studio here next after us so i hope he's not flying today i'd be a little sad about that but anyway uh our agents will talk anyway um yeah but why why do we make such a big fuss over tim tebow good or bad usually bad nobody focuses on like when he throws a prom for mentally disabled kids or when you know he pulls a puppy out of a river shirtless or that was a Super Bowl commercial or whatever. But either either way, like, why do we never focus on the good things? It's always about, ah, you messed up. Because we'll go back to what we've been saying for the last week. Everybody loves drama. Is and, it? And, like, and, yes, it's, drama. and it's easier to make fun of him than to, like, oh, like we said yesterday, it's easier to complain about a restaurant than tell them that they're doing a good job. It's easier to point out all of people's flaws than to, uh... Do you think it's because he's a Christian? Because how many times did he get just blasted for his prayer uh, and his John 3.16 eye, eye makeup and all that fun stuff when he played football? I don't think that that has anything to do with this. I think that has to do with just people being bullies. Hmm. Interesting. Do you think? 
Yeah, like, like I would, I would seek is, out though. someone and be like, "That guy's a Christian. <laughs> I'm gonna make fun of him." Yeah. Well, I mean, I would hope from you know from one Christian to another that people wouldn't wouldn't do that, of course. But how often do we see stuff like this happen, though? I mean, it really is more so with 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 guys like Ian or with not guys like Ian. I'm sorry, Ian's commenting, so I'm making fun of Ian. Sorry, no guys <laughs> like Tim Tebow. Sorry, Ian. I promise you're a nice guy. I'm not trying to make fun of you. <laughs> Um, Ian does say he is a big Tim Tebow fan. He does, and people are justifying Tim Tebow's struggle at his first at bat. At least he went 0 for three throughout for the, through the entire game. But he also faced the Cy Young Award winner as the best pitcher in baseball, basically last year, on his first ever at major league at bat. So nobody really. It could have been John Carlos Stanton, one of the best in the game. Derek Jeter. Those guys all would have struggled. Right. It doesn't matter how many years of experience you've got. You're going up against arguably one of the best to ever play the game. Good luck, you know, kind of a thing. But it, it, yeah, I, I do agree with you though with what you're saying about how people just love the drama. People love to pick out the faults, you know. Like if I were just to make fun of you, be like, well, your hair doesn't match. You've got two tone color hair. Like I don't care how nice of a person you are or how much you give to charity, but like if I don't like your hair, I'm gonna let you have it and I'm right, gonna tweet and some about people, you. And People in everyday life do. I mean, like when you're growing up, people make fun of your outfit. If your shoes aren't cool enough, if you're this, if you're that, it's the same thing. Yes. Tim Tebow is a little bit different than everybody else that plays sports. He's a little more quiet about certain things. You know, or or not quite where other Christians who who are athletes maybe are. So that's probably part of it. He's he's yeah. m- more open about it. I would agree with you on that one. Yeah, you, you you hope that he certainly finds some sort of success, and he's just continuing to show younger players that look. If you've got a dream, no matter what it is, I mean, it, it's really in general to the world. Like if you've got a dream, go and chase it. You know, if you might not succeed at one thing, go and try something else. It happens. Not everybody's going to be perfect. I mean. This isn't my first time in broadcasting. This is, you know, I've, I've had to work my way through good and bad situations to then land at an opportunity where I finally, you know, feel comfortable and feel like I'm actually having some sort of success as well, too. So people go through different slumps and bumps in their jobs and their, their life all the time. So, you know, harness the, the energy, harness the positivity of what Tim Tebow was trying to do to the world and embrace it. Don't, don't mm-hmm. shun him. Sure. Unless not, I mean, it's okay to have a. a I just, I, you just it. know that I don't think that he should play baseball. I just think. Do you he think he should have stayed at football, or? I think he should stick to broadcasting. Fair enough. I don't mind broadcasting. He cleans up well. He speaks well. He. He's a very smart guy. Well. Very knowledgeable. Yeah. I just. Would you go on a date with Tim Tebow? If Tim decided to start commenting on our on our morning brew and be like, "Hey, Jamie, you're a nice lady. I'll take you on a date." Hmm. No? I don't know. Hmm. Maybe. He's bigger than me, so that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> that is a stipulation. Must be at least six feet tall. We heard that on Tuesday morning. All right. Um, well, I think we should probably move along with the show uh, as we get ready to move along with things. So, uh, of course, free agency right now in the Major League Baseball world uh, is not as big as it was, of course, because you know spring training is going on. Teams are really starting to put together who they are and what is going on, Uh, but the NFL is hot and heavy. Today is March 9th, which is the start of NFL free agency. Uh, Officially, the legal tampering started yesterday with certain teams and players, but uh, now today is the big, big thing. And of course, being here in Milwaukee, we have the opportunity to speak with people that are at the very forefront of what is taking place uh, in the sports world. And one of those fine gentlemen is now seated in the studio with us now. It is Bill Schmidt. Bill, good morning, sir. How are we doing today? Good, man. How are you doing? Doing well. Congratulations. You know, great for you know, great to have you on the set today. It's, yeah, uh, for sure. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, absolutely. Tuned in. Thought it was an awesome spot, so I had to come in and check it out for myself. Well, we appreciate you being here. So Brewer Spring Training, of course. Uh, we don't have the, the drama of Tim Tebow right now, so we gotta just got to focus on as a team – in what? What are what are the positives that we can kind of focus on? Yeah, I, I, I don't know if everyone's upset that we don't have Tim Tebow to talk about. Um, <laughs> frankly, I think it would would have been an awesome storyline. I agree. Uh, but you know, there's so many exciting things to look at with these guys. There's there's a lot of young talent on the team. You're looking at like Lewis Brinson, uh, Ryan Cordell's been hitting the cover off the ball in the yeah. first couple of weeks. Uh, I'm actually heading down there with uh, with Tim. We're going to do the show from there uh, for, a, for a week, so we're going to head down on Saturday. Like we said, hopefully the windstorm uh, dies down for yeah. us to get on out do of you Chicago. Mind flying? Are you, are you, are you yeah, I'm pretty good with it. Okay, um, that's good. We, I went to Vegas last month, and we oh. had a nice hour worth of turbulence. Ooh. And I think at that point, if I got over that one, I think I should be fine. So, <laughs> like, uh, no, thank you. No, yeah, so, I mean, you. there's a lot of storylines, a lot of pitching guys that I think can, 
can make an impact for the team. Right. And it, it's all just going to be who shows up and who wants to go to work every day. And I think that's what Craig has, has really implemented with the guys and made it known that, you know, every spot's up for grabs. So it, it should be a fun next couple of weeks. You look at, obviously, the Brewers last year and still a very young team. I keep hearing these cross comparisons that the Brewers have the best farm system. You know, give them a couple of years. They're going to be the Chicago Cubs in a couple mm-hmm. of years. Is that is that actually a real thing, or are we just trying to make ourselves as Brewer fans feel better about ourselves? Yeah, I think there's there's a lot of want to be the Chicago Cubs, obviously, for what they've done in the last year and what they've done in the last five years, uh, really building that that farm system to what it was when you have, you know, Rizzo and Bryant and, Addison Russell and Javi Baez right. coming up all at the same time. But when you look at a timetable like that, uh, it can you can relate it back to the to the Brewers in the you know, the O mm-hmm. five to O eight range when you had guys like Ricky Weeks, JJ Hardy coming right. up. It's gonna be paced a little bit more like that. I don't think you're gonna see a mass rush to the big leagues like the Cubs had. And you know, uh Theo Epstein talked about it right after they won the World Series and said, you know, what we did is something that can't really necessarily be copied yeah. <laughs> because not every team has $170 million True. to go and throw at John Lester and expedite the rebuild for two years. So exactly. there's a big difference between what the Chicago market and what the Milwaukee market can do. Mm-hmm. The only other glaring deficiency I see between the Cubs rebuild and what the Brewers have is there's really no Chris Bryant right now. Yeah, we, I mean, and Ryan Braun has done a good job for the Brewers. Mm-hmm. Let's let's not take anything away from from him when he's actually healthy and actually caring about what's going on, of course. But uh, is is Ryan Braun still as I don't know if popular is the right word, but is he still as infallible as he used to be? For you the know, Brewers? we talk about that on the show all the time. It's one of those common discussions of what is Ryan Braun now? Yeah, is he still a fan favorite? It was obviously a, a tough couple of years after the situation went down. I think he is in back in the good graces with a lot of the family. Okay. A lot of fans seem to still know that he's our guy. We still want him around. And, you know, he was that, that 2000s ball club's version of Chris Bryan. You know, once Ryan Braun got to the big leagues, it, we were there. Yes. You were, you were ready to compete. You were ready to get something going. So I think a lot of people still kind of hold on to that mindset of what he was and what he can be. And what he was last year was a guy that hit 315, had 25 home runs and just short of 100 RBIs. True. And was one of the more productive left fielders in baseball. So when you look at you have to get rid of him, you have to trade him, I necessarily don't think that he has to be gone for this whole rebuild to work. Right. Uh, It's obviously a fun discussion. I wouldn't be upset if they – made a move because then we'd have a little something to talk about that would certainly and that's that's the big thing i feel like for wisconsin sports as a whole i mean how many times do free agency or signing days come and go or even the draft as a whole and people are like oh mm-hmm. maybe we should take this exciting high-flying player and then you know the brewers the bucks the packers are just like eh, maybe yeah. not. well actually i was on my that's why i was a little bit late i was making sure ted thompson was awake that you gotta make sure he like, hey, started. Uh, make Ted, sure that he knew that. Ted, like, you know. Make sure he knew it was March, March 9th. <laughs> Today's kind of a big deal, Ted. I know you probably have like golf or you know, cricket yeah, or whatever. Yeah, he was hanging on the hot tub, so I had to make sure that he got inside. <laughs> probably, and early, got early morning. We threw a rager last night. Yeah. Just like, oh, I don't so. know if it was the morning. I think it was still the still wee hours <laughs> of the night for Ted. <laughs> I love it. Um, everybody talks about um, the, like who impresses them throughout spring training. Do you have anybody mm-hmm. that's disappointed at you? Ooh. Disappointed. You know, it is so short. Why are you uh, so early? negative, Jamie? We talked about trying to be positive, and here you are trying to bring the program It's trying down. to bring it down. It's, you know, 719 in the morning. Good Lord. Trying to keep us at, like, you know. She's trying to make sure people don't get she too She keeps excited. me in check, Bill. Yeah. If you haven't gathered that, she keeps me in check here on the show. Because <laughs> he was thinking the Brewers were going to win the division. Right. Yeah. Like 90 I mean, games, right? he's going to draft the entire Brewers for heart. Brewers <laughs> Fantasy. Like, just the whole team. <laughs> this is my year, baby. Let's go. Um, You know, I think... Early on, you're not seeing a whole lot of at bats, so I don't really know if anyone's necessarily disappointed. You'd like to see a couple different stronger outings. Uh, Junior Guerra got not necessarily roughed up, but he got hit around the yard a little bit in his last outing. Uh, yesterday came back, pitched a little bit better in his first uh, first inning of work. Josh Haders looked good. You haven't necessarily seen, and I'll get a lot more, have a lot more uh, next week after right, you, know, you right. can see the guys up close and see Absolutely. how AP goes and everything, but... Early on, I think everyone's just kind of getting back in the swing of things, getting right. some hits back okay. in. We have Robert on Facebook asking what you think the trade value for Ryan Braun is. 
Six dollars. Six dollars. Wow. Apparently. apparently that's it. She is real negative. This she morning. is. <laughs> I, Goodness. I you you see what I have to work with here, Bill. It's it's a hard situation say, to be in. But you really you got to put some in that coffee. Make sure that you're ready to rock and roll. This <laughs> Who morning. says I don't? I mean that's why I try to be so happy. <laughs> like only, good morning, only everybody. Show where there's no alcohol. <laughs> Thus far, you got to bring the bloody Mar- got to bring I the will. bloody Marys in. We embrace the whole brew sports, and we, we, we encourage drinking. There's so there are usually Bloody Marys? And you there should be. There, ha- there hasn't yet. Because, I mean, so many people, at least for me, can't just crack open a beer at you know 7.15 in the morning like Ted Thompson and be like, game on for the yeah, day. Yeah, like, rock and roll. I need a Bloody Mary. I need to ease my way into it. A little clue or something in the coffee. Like, I can't just crack open a Miller or whatever and be like, here we go. Like, it's not my day. It's, <laughs> I got to at least get to like – I got to get at least to like 11 to justify that it's lunchtime somewhere in the world. But – any, anyway, that's Well, Baxter, that's I'm going to give person. you one piece of advice. Please. Can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. That's a very valid point. Jamie, of all people, and I'm sure you know that. <laughs> <laughs> Me? That's a taking a shot at her yeah, earlier. Uh, I would not know. So we're talking trade value, talking Ryan trade Braun. Value for I Ryan totally Braun. derailed Going the show. Somewhere. That's what we Somebody do. Somebody said alcohol, and I got excited. No, you're, um, it happens. <laughs> so trade value for Ryan Braun. I think, you know, Tim and I had a lot of discussions. You can hear our show. Uh, when you know, is your show, shameless, by the way? shameless plug? Please, yeah, tell us. Uh, after each and every game uh, on Sports Radio 105.7 FM, the fan also uh, get our app. We're on the TuneIn app. Yeah, uh, 12:50 a.m. All different ways to listen to us. But after each game for about an hour and a half, we're on air uh, taking calls and just talking Brewers. So we had the discussion for months last year. I don't know if you're getting you know two in the top five of someone's farm system. And is that really what it comes down to nowadays? It's like, what? Here's my current player for future considerations, basically. Oh like yeah, for farm system. Yeah, you're not. Well, I mean, if you if you trade Ryan Braun in the way that your your whole organization is, I feel, and you don't get minor league prospects. Sure. I think you kind of screwed up the whole the whole timeline because hmm. you're trying to put in guys that are going to be players in 2021. Because the Brewers aren't trying to win now. That's no. I think that's the reality no, I that I think so many people. Yeah, that's the reality that a lot of people and my co-host are. The man that hosts the show is one of those people that I've had to – we've had to rein in. Be like, shh, shh. And this is how it's going to happen. Yes. <laughs> Eventually. We'll get there. I think the bottoming out hasn't necessarily happened that the Brewers thought they were going to see. Okay. But uh, – and a lot of that is Ryan Braun hitting, you know, 315 and that producing runs like he did last year. Should the Brewers be playing worse than they actually are? Like to stop giving oh, fans I would semi, semi-hope? Like, I would have like, thought guys, they would have like, played a lot worse trying to pretend year. like we're decent. 73 wins was uh, – was a high total for that team last it year. It was. And um, I want to believe that it's only going to go higher. I think 75, 76 wins is a good Base. baseline of where they could get this year. Yes. I could also see them winning 60, 68, 65 games if people, you know, don't take another step forward. I mean, if you don't get 60 stolen bases from Jonathan VR. Mm-hmm. You probably win 65 games. <laughs> That's a good point. I have a question for you from somebody on Facebook. Brendan wants to know how you keep your hair looking so nice. <laughs> um, Brendan, uh, it is a two step process a rinse, lather, repeat. That sounded uh, like three. Double, double shampoo. Double shampoo. And then I hit the conditioner one time. Ooh, one time. Uh, is that like a once a week shampoo. sort of thing? Or oh, like, no, that's a, you know, that's a daily? Cause not I, daily. Because people like, it's say not you can't safe. wash the hair daily. See, Baxter, I know you, you keep your hair very nice. I, I, I try. You can't wash your hair when you got longer locks. You can't wash it every single day. You got to hold on maybe every other day. Do you wash your hair daily? Mostly. I mean, like, usually if my hair's down, I wash it every day because otherwise Mm -hmm. it just looks gross. But, like, if it's back, it's usually, like, back tees so you can't see how gross it is. Yeah. If it's Mm -hmm. back, you can go usually every other day. Ah, exactly. I I do have to ask you this as well, too, maybe because I I don't know where you played high school. Did you play at Whitnow? I did. Okay. So, Craig on Facebook says shout out to the Whitnow Falcons. So. Uh, oh, nice. Craig, uh, Craig giving you some love there. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Robert also says uh, Arizona lost uh, the game because they traded Shelby Miller, giving up for their farm system shortstop as well, too. So I guess that um, you know, the trades are still happening, I guess, all over the place. But people are also talking about the Bills losing in wiffle ball the other day on Facebook as well, too. So, guys, Tanner Somebody's Burch- talking about the wiffle ball game that we yeah. had the other day. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, that's, uh, Embarrassing. Blew a 3-1 lead, apparently. It was a painful day. I don't know why that had to get brought up. <laughs> Brody uh, brought it up. We've sadly actually lost two in a row. Really? Is it s- a rebuilding year for you guys? You know, I think, uh, I think it's kind of just a downturn in the season. Okay. We, uh, Everybody we really hits hit, that, we hit the, mid, s- the mid-mark of the year. Drop a little bit. And then... uh, you know, spring break's coming up. People are, people are looking forward. 
Sure. Not necessarily in the game. People are we were, we were a little, little distracted on defense. But you blew the lead. You specifically. I did not. I did not. Uh, uh, that's not Who what Adam says. That? Adam says Bill blew a 3-1 lead in Wiffle Ball in, in last week in the last inning on a 3-1 count. Hashtag he was pitching. Game. Adam Patrick apparently is yep. calling you yep. out. That's the, uh, that's the one that was pitching and gave up nine ah. in the first three Ooh. innings. But we'll throw that. We'll just throw that in the hopper. <laughs> throw that back over there. All right, transitioning out of baseball into the Green Bay Packers. Bill, first of all, thank you. We appreciate you, you know, coming into the studio today. The Green Bay Packers, unfortunately, will probably not do a single thing. All they will do is they will continue to say, bye, Nick Perry, bye, Micah Hyde, mm-hmm. because that's the guys that we're hearing right now that are likely going to leave that the Packers should be re-signing, unless I'm wrong about that. I think those are two guys that need to be a priority for, for signing, for you know keeping them on the team before we even right. try to go sign anybody else. But... Do the Packers realistically make any sort of move that fans are going to care about, or is it going to be somebody like in four weeks where it's like, oh, he was a seventh round draft pick that you know has From a lot of up, has right. a lot of great upside? I don't think the team is going to go out and get Stephon Gilmore or Tremaine Jackson from uh, the L.A. Rams. They're not going to go out and sign nice. one of the top three, five corners. They're not going to go and sign somebody that's you know, a top, Flowers a top three a pass agent, rusher. You know? Like you said, they're going to deacon dunk. They're going to find different guys that can come in, yeah. fit the system, fit what they want to do on defense. Nick Perry is one guy that I don't think they need to sign. Interesting. Uh, if you look at what he's done in his years in Green Bay, he was averaging two to three sacks in his first three years. Yeah. Gets to a contract year, he puts up 11. Yeah. Uh, now it's amazing how that happens. Right. And I don't, <laughs> the big one that glares out to me as a uh, as a you know 90s kid is uh, Cletus Hunt. Yes. The Packers signed him in the early 2000s. Good old Give him $37 million, and I don't think they saw from him in the next three months. No. So there's <laughs> – He was just gone. Yeah, so I think when you look at a guy that was on a contract year and he has a season like Nick Perry did, there's obvious red flags. You know, why was, why was his production lower than it was? I think he's right around like a six-and-a-half, seven-sack-a-year kind of guy. Mm-hmm. I think you can find those in April. Interesting. There's also a lot of good pass rushers in this draft, and obviously you know, we know Ted loves – Loves to work in the draft. Loves the draft. Um, when, I, when I went to wake him up this morning, I saw his draft board was filled through his living room. <laughs> so I would expect the Packers to bring three, three to four guys in, two to three maybe with some name recognition, but nothing where you're looking at you know, the top 25 or the top 30 free agents, I don't think, at all of football. Fair enough, fair enough. So do Packer fans, I guess, have anything to look forward to, you know? Oh, yeah, I think you have a playoff appearance to look forward to. That's it. So just to heck with free agency, to heck with the 12 guys we'll draft and say, meh, forget about it. Basically. You know, I think, I think it's a, a big, not necessarily problem when you look at Packer fans in general, but when you go to the playoffs for eight straight years, you're doing, you're doing something right. He's about to say you're doing yeah, something and, right. You know, seven of, then is it really something to look forward to? Because we're kind of used to it. Like, eh, go to the playoffs right. again. It's, it's oh. gotten, As Packer it's fans, gotten we are almost It's gotten, it's now, gotten yeah. ordinary. Exactly. It's not an ordinary feat. It's There's only two different te- or two teams in football that have had the kind of run Packers, with the Packers, and, Packers and Patriots. Yeah. Obviously, the Patriots have capitalized with rings. Yeah. Packers have What's fallen short like? <laughs> three different yeah. times. Yes. Uh, Caleb on Facebook asks, who do you think signs Nick Perry? Because we've heard rumors. I think of the Colts, the Raiders, and some other team I think was also tossed out there I as could well. definitely see him ending up with the Jets. I think mm. I heard that yesterday. Sorry, uh, Kevin, Nick. Kevin Green – Went there to be their outside linebackers coach. Sure. Uh, who was the outside linebackers coach when Nick Perry was here uh, early on. And same thing. I mean, he didn't have necessarily the production mm-hmm. that he did last season with, under Kevin Green, but I know that's a relationship that I believe he keeps uh, pretty close. So I could definitely see him going to the Jets. Hmm. I could see him going to the Colts. They have a lot of money to spend, and Chris Ballard looks like a GM that's trying to rebuild that roster R- Literally from the ground up, mm-hmm. I feel like. So. If you're the Jets, I mean, you might as well just start throwing money around and hoping for the best at this point. Look at, look at what the Jaguars do every single yeah. time. I mean, it's but now they're going to potentially sign Calais Campbell as well mm-hmm. too. So after the, they just brought in Malik Jackson last year, if you're a defensive player hitting free agency, Jacksonville, seems... call Jacksonville. It's warm. They will pay you a lot of money, <laughs> and you get to play in a nice stadium for the most part. I you don't get you to know? win, but they you get, get to win. Play in a but nice if you can, you know, I be cool with all that other there, stuff, so that's an they do. They have a huge anyone. pool. Florida. Uh, uh, Ryan wants to know the thoughts of potentially drafting a strong safety in the first round for the Packers. Gosh, that's tough because I think your secondary is pretty strong in the middle there with mm-hmm. Ha Ha and Morgan. Weren't they kind of talking about um, running backs in the first two or Mike? Yeah, a lot I've, of that. I've hangs. heard a lot of running backs. What about talk. Lacey? I guess that's the yeah. one thing that so many folks are kind of 
Are we play it back and forth. Reading? Should we sign him? What about Ty? Is Ty a, a 200 to 200 to 300, you know, carry a season kind of player? Mm-hmm. Like, what do we do with Ty? Yeah, Montgomery? he's he's a you know 15 carry guy. I think each game. I wouldn't be surprised if Eddie Lacy's back at you know a year, two and a half, three million dollars. Sure, I could see something that. Something a low level. I know he's talking incentives. Potentially. From what we've heard, is he kind of wants to get one of those one year bet on himself kind of deals. Yes. Give himself an opportunity to get that you know four year deal next year that he thought. Uh, he probably should have gotten this year. So I would – I think they're going to – and uh, Corey Clement said last week at the Combine yeah. he had talked with a member of the Packers scouting staff, and they said they're potentially taking two running backs in this draft. Interesting. So I think that definitely uh, – Would Corey Clement fit into the Packers system? Might. He's not necessarily a catch-the-ball-out-of-the-backfield kind of back. I think uh, right. Daria Gumbawale from the Badgers more yes. fits that group. Bless you. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Jamie was like, can you say that on the air? I'm like, yes, yes, you can. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think he's a little bit more of a, a pass-catching back, fits kind of what they want to do, spread it out a little bit more. I think uh, I think Corey's a downhill back, but I think he's got a little bit more to give than what he gave at Wisconsin. Yeah. I, I don't think they gave that. him the ball necessarily enough. He also didn't necessarily have uh, – a full season besides this year that you saw him. True. Uh, I'm pe- I'm, people are pleading for Christian McCaffrey potentially I to love the Packers. That. I love that idea. I would be com- I, and I think he would be around at that point as mm-hmm. well, too. He's not a top 10 or 15 draft pick. His combine was good. He wasn't bad. He was did exactly what we thought he was going to do. Mm-hmm. So, I, But I think there's a, a lot of other talented players overall that won't, you know, that, that, will, that will affect where he goes, I guess. But I could see him going to the Packers, to the Patriots, a team that – you know, to the Steelers, to somebody the Steelers. there in the back end of the round. And I think McCaffrey kind of, to get to the strong safety question, uh, the only safety I think really I would necessarily be happy seeing is, besides Jalen Adams and Malik Hoker are going to be gone yeah. in the top ten, uh, I really like Jabriel Peppers. He yeah, can do a lot too. of different things. As a football player, I see him as just a dude that loves to is play. Is he a first-round guy? I think he's a first-round talent for mm-hmm. sure. I think he's, And he's multidimensional. He's a multidimensional too. guy. At worst, in his first season, while you figure out where he's going to play defense, He's one of the top five kick returners in football. And I think so, that's a huge thing to that's have. That's a huge thing to have. It shifts the field. And Peppers is kind of fits into that idea with what McCaffrey is. He was high production in college, put up a lot of good numbers, played a lot of good football, but wasn't necessarily a top ten talent. Not sure. necessarily a top ten body. I think is one thing that you'll hear a lot of, you know, mm-hmm. if you're watching the combine, Mike Mayock describing every yes. physical feature. He has his, you know, his tags for all the different guys. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Peppers and McCaffrey necessarily fit into that one mold. He's not, you know, 240. He's not Leonard Fournette. Mm-hmm. But he can catch the ball out of the backfield and he can make plays. Uh, your cousin Jordan says, hey, uh, to you, by the way, Bill. Uh, and she also, uh, he also says, give Brett Hundley away for a first rounder. If they can get Brett Hundley for a first rounder, I don't know why anyone's not taking it. Uh, Ryan from Facebook says, Delvin Cook is greater than Eddie Lacy. And I know that the Packers had talked to him at the Combine, but... Everyone's, Calvin Cook's not going to be around. I but everyone's too. right, saying that he's obviously going to get picked up way before. He'll be like a top 10 pick. We'll I have to or. see. He ran. He was not impressive in what he ran. He ran like a 4-5 for a guy that's, you know, 5'10", 5'11", 210 pounds. He is the pass catching back, you know. He, he is. is kind of the McCaffrey style, but he did not run nearly as well as McCaffrey did, and his drills did not necessarily look as True. as good as McCaffrey's did. And Leroy Butler and I were talking about it in the studio uh, yesterday as, Name you know, drop. Dalvin Cook might not be able to – he might not have wanted to work out at the Combine. He definitely did not look necessarily ready. He may have fallen down in that that 20, hmm. mid-20 range. Maybe he did it on purpose. He's like, I'm just going to – I don't want to like, go to the Browns. I'm going yeah, yeah, right. to trot my way through this. Yeah, just whatever. I'm going to only Did anyone think that maybe five. more guys should do that? Maybe, if you're the number like three, tank. maybe pick, eh, if I could fall back into the teens, yeah. I'd, rather not, the I'd rather not go to Oakland or I'd rather discovered. not go to Jacksonville. Be like, ah, or maybe just be injured be like, no, guys, I'm just not feeling the But if free agency is anything, Jacksonville should be the place that people want to go. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, Bill, you're going to be back uh, for our Bubbler Banter show with Josh and Ian uh, a little well, after nine uh, to get into this even more for all the Wisconsin. Because the comments keep rolling in, but we have to move on, unfortunately, with the show. So I want to thank you for stopping by the Morning Brew. For sure. We can have you back on again, too, after you Absolutely. get back from beautiful Arizona. Let's do it. All right, Bill. Well, we'll talk to you Thanks, soon. Guys. All right, there goes Bill Schmidt. Um, so some exciting stuff that we've talked about so far on the program this morning uh, as we continue to roll along here on the Morning Brew. Uh, NFL free agency, as we mentioned, 
a hot topic uh, today among many different avenues, basically. So w one of the big names, of course, is, as many people know, has been Tony Romo. Where is he going to go? He was officially cut by the Dallas Cowboys yesterday, and people are saying that was the best thing that they really could have done. Jerry Jones, you know, bringing down the axe on, on big old Tony T there, Tony R, uh, thinking like, okay, well, what, what, what are we going to do with him now? And we've heard rumors that he's going to go to the Texans. We've heard rumors that he's going to go to the Broncos as well. Where is a realistic landing spot for a guy like Tony Romo? I, I don't necessarily know if people have a clear idea of what makes the most sense for Tony Romo, Jamie. I don't know if you you yourself are like, oh, I think I have a, a great idea for Tony Romo. Or you were you were just you were you were came, came into the studio like I know everything about Tony Romo. I'm like, do you? <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> I said I knew a little, not everything. A little? Um, I think that he will go to the Broncos. The Broncos? Yep. Wants to, uh, Aaron's saying he you know, Romo should go to the Bears. Well, that's actually kind of void at this point, Aaron, because the Bears are in the process of finalizing a $14.5 million a year deal for Mike Glennon, apparently. So the, the most sought-after quarterback uh, in the National Football League since Aaron Rodgers. No, that's not true. Mike Glennon, though, to the Bears for $14.5 million. We'll talk about that uh, a little bit later on. Robert thinks Romo should go to the Jets. But uh, if, you're, if you're Tony Romo, you want to play the field. You don't want to go to a team that was even worse than the team you were on last year. I think Romo would have almost rather have sat on the bench, got the de facto Super Bowl ring if the Cowboys would have won it, and been like, all right, maybe I'm good. Maybe I don't need to play anymore. Do you think uh, part of a team picking him up is um – because obviously he'll be a backup, but more so just to, to learn from him, to let their their first quarterback like learn yeah. his ways. And well, yeah. Anytime you bring a veteran in like that, I, I feel like you you have to to think a little bit. If if Tony Romo isn't going to be your starting quarterback, and you still think he's will you know enough to get the job somewhere, people are saying. Uh, Peter just comments on Facebook as well too. He says the Broncos would be a great fit for Romo. I I would agree with you on that one because. Romo wants to try to compete for a Super Bowl. Totally get that. We're, we're realistically our Super Bowl, to an extent, caliber teams hanging out right now. New England, they're good. Green Bay, they're good. The Giants, yeah, I guess they're a Super Bowl team. Dallas, Romo just got kicked out of Dallas, basically. Bye. What else are you supposed to do? Denver. Denver's, you know, won the Super Bowl. Peyton Manning then retired. You got Trevor Simeon in there doing his darndest to keep the team relevant. They missed the playoffs, so... You've got already a championship caliber defense. You've got most of the same offensive tools that were already so talented last year. Emmanuel Sanders, Demarius Thomas, just a, a, a fresh core of players that are so dynamic. All you need is a guy that can give him the ball and not be and actually has experience in the league. So that makes total sense to me. Throw Tony Romo into Denver for maybe a two-year deal, you know, nothing too crazy, and just say, hey, he'll probably just let's, get hurt again. let's see what happens. Exactly. But then also tell Trevor, be like, look, we know you're going to end up playing like week four, so just get ready kind of a thing. Right. So maybe it's, some, maybe it's good. Have him go there, teach them his ways, because he's obviously a good football player, was. He's just brittle and needs to drink more milk. More brittle. <laughs> Got to strengthen those bones, Tony. <laughs> Got to milk. Milk gives you strong bones. Okay. I, I, now that I say that word, I feel like I need to ask you this. Is it milk? Milk? Milk. Milk? I don't know. What like am I M -E -L -K? saying? Like M-E-L-K? You're saying it like milk. Like I am too. I say milk. And I have a friend milk. who literally milk. like screams milk. at people if you get it wrong. It's, it's, it's milk. It's how you say it. It's M-I-L-K. Milk. I want some, you know, some skim milk or some almond milk. But am I saying milk or am I saying you're, milk? You're, em you're emphasizing the mil. Like the, so like that's how it's supposed to You're saying that. like mel, like my friend mel. Like, hey, I've milk. got some milk. Milk. <laughs> I know. Now you're going to the rest of the day. You're going to be like, wait, how do you say it? How do you say it? Like, ah. Like, milk. Milk. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so drink more, <laughs> drink more milk gives you strong bones. Go, Tony. Uh, Ian says the Texans make sense. Now, if you want him to be a starter, yeah, he, he could also uh, be that, that role model to Brock Osweiler, who had such a tragic year last year, getting paid $17 million a year to basically do nothing and throw interceptions. So he was Jay Cutler. But is basically. it worth the risk to, to start him? Like, is it worth... I don't, I don't know. That's the big thing that I struggle with Tony Romo is that I don't know if you, if you are a team that is going to invest. So if I had literally no other option, I was like, okay, Tony Romo is the only quarterback available that we feel comfortable, comfortable trying to get, then sure, maybe. You, th you throw a small amount at him and say, and then you, you, you backload the contract with a lot of incentives. If you stay healthy, if you win this many games, we'll then give you much more money. He's already been in the league long enough. He's got plenty of money. Yeah, on last week you and Tanner did your sit, cut, and start. Start, sit, cut, yes. You guys had 
Romo, Romo Cutler, Cutler, and Kirk Cousins. You're right. Okay, so we all agreed to, I think, cut Cutler. Cut, cut Cutler. Start Romo because we all knew he was going to get hurt so that Kirk Cousins could play. So I, we're I, saying No, the same I started thing. Cousins. Oh, did you? I started Cousins. Oh, yeah, and I agree was, with Tanner. And That's I was right. yelling at Tanner right. because I'm like, why would you start a guy just so he can get hurt? That doesn't make any sense to me. That's right. Yeah, I, because then, then – If the Packers were that way or the Patriots were that way, Jimmy Garoppolo and Brett Hundley would be the starting quarterbacks just so that they knew that they'd be fine with Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. You start a guy because you believe in him, not because you're waiting for the, him to get hurt so you can actually but play the other guy. you use him, so you might as well use him now in case Kirk Cousins gets hurt I think that's in our ridiculous. team. Um, John, or Brew on Facebook, to throw us a little breaking news, he says that Deshaun Jackson, a former Washington Redskin, is expected to sign with the Buccaneers. Thanks for tossing that our way, Brew. I think that that's a, a sharp deal for the Buccaneers. And everybody loves Florida, so why not go down to Florida? You can play with the young quarterback in Jameis Winston. We'll see if the Buccaneers can figure out the running back situation, though, too. So that'll be, that'll be a big thing. But I appreciate that, Brew. We'll have to add that to the rest of our programming a little bit later on. Aaron says that he started Tony Roma, which I still think... It depends on your reasoning for starting Tony Romo. If you're starting him because you're like, well, he'll get hurt, so then I'll be fine with my backup. No. Okay, but you start Kirk Cousins, he gets injured. Now you have Tony Romo, and he gets hurt a day later because he has a, another shattered collarbone. I think now you're out two QBs. Well, yeah, but I feel like my, my longevity with Kirk Cousins is better. I feel like Kirk is going to stay healthier, longer, and be more successful, in my opinion. Hmm. It's okay to not agree with me, Jamie. I don't want you to agree with me. I'd be <laughs> mad if you only agreed with me. Be like, stop it! I don't agree with you. We did agree on starting cinnamon rolls yesterday, we did. though. Cinnamon rolls. But you were you you. So if you if you missed our Tanner and I show yesterday, we were we did our normal start set cut, and then I threw a breakfast edition where we had cinnamon rolls, pancakes, and waffles, and you had to start one, cut one, sit one, basically. Uh, I started cinnamon rolls. I sat pancakes, and I cut waffles, and. I've been receiving a lot of backlash for cutting waffles, apparently, because waffles are bay, according to so many people, according they to you, Jamie. They just cute little pockets, and when there's a lot of extra butter in there, it's just so good. Little pockets. Yeah. I also started cinnamon rolls, though, because those are great. Boom. So many flavors. Hashtag <laughs> CRs for days. Love cinnamon rolls. Uh, yeah, it sounds like... Uh, yeah, it sounds like from what I'm hearing now, too, is my, my phone is starting to light up from both ESPN and Bleacher Report that um, Deshaun Jackson will sign with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So a good move for them. they got to get Vincent Jackson back in there as well, too, shore up that defense a little bit, and Tampa might be returning to their old Brad Johnson glory days there when Mike Allstott, and War or when Mike Allstott was running around back there as well, too. Uh, Jeff says, sounds like Micah Hyde may sign with somebody else. Yep, that's what I've been hearing as well, too, Jeff. I uh, appreciate the insight on that one. Robert says, go ASU, hashtag Brock. No, let's not, let's not give the Sun Devils more credit than they actually need. <laughs> I just I think that's, that's, that's a little icky. But he also says Roma should retire. Yeah, Aaron wants to know where Cutler's going to go as well, too. I, I don't know. I thought Cutler was going to go to San Francisco, but then San Francisco threw money at Brian Hoyer, being like, all right, Brian. I don't know how many people have money that they feel comfortable putting money into Brian Hoyer, but Brian Hoyer is one of those moves where you, you throw money at him and then you also go and draft a quarterback as well too and say, all right, you guys kind of duke it out because they didn't throw a ton of money at Brian Hoyer. It was just like, here's a little bit of money. Let's see what happens, but we're also probably going to draft somebody to make, the, you know, to make training camp interesting and we'll really just kind of see what happens there basically. Uh, Brew says he would cut pancakes. My guy. I don't know if we can be friends anymore, Brew. We can. Have you guys ever have you been to the Pancake House here in Milwaukee? Yeah, and I always got a waffle. What? Who goes to the Pancake Just House? Just kidding. I think I got omelets. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> you, you. <laughs> You, you, you. Uh, you but I agree with you, though, Robert, that Romo should probably just retire or at least be a mentor. Yes, he doesn't need to be signed as a starting quarterback, but I think he's a smart guy. He's been around, seen a lot of stuff. He's seen some things, man. I think he could really <laughs> be beneficial to young quarterbacks that are trying to learn. I think he would be a good mentor for Trevor Simeon. I think he would maybe be a, a decent mentor for Brock Osweiler. And it's not like he's not – I mean, he's obviously not doing this anymore for the money because he's got plenty of it. At this point in his career, yes. So I also agree – What's wrong with him just taking a sideline job? I don't know. Maybe, yeah. Hold the clipboard, Tony. All right, uh, Throwback Thursday, always a good time when people Instagram or throwback to the good old days uh, when life was blissful and worry-free and being an adult wasn't hard. Those were the days, Jamie, weren't they? Yep, I remember them so well. Do you ever go through your, your Facebook memories and see, like, the on this day and you're just like, oh, I was... I no, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I was so embarrassing. Really? Oh, yeah, my status, they're like, 
I bet you I could find something embarrassing. I was gonna right say, now. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go back here really fast to see what my life was like. Um, let's see, Baxter, eight years ago on Facebook, said is sunburnt and is going to bed. Night, everyone. There we go. Uh, seven years ago, I said work today. Tongue face, can't wait. Uh, then apparently, I was yelling at my friend to answer his phone, and then I went on choir tour for my college, uh, and then let's see. Oh, uh, a year ago, was this a year ago today? A year ago today, Brock Osweiler. Signed with the Houston Texans, of course, uh, to a ridiculous deal. I, I shared that as well. Also found out that I got to uh, call a, a broadcast for Giannis' little brother, Costas. Uh, that was fun. That was, was you know, all 6'10 of him. That was a good time. Uh, yeah, that was, that was my life on, on, on this day in Baxter Colburn sports history. Mine is a lot of stupid, cheesy quotes with hearts at the end of them, so that's embarrassing. You were that girl in yeah. high school. I want to hear some. What's what um, have we got? <laughs> What do we got? What do we got? No, they're so embarrassing. <laughs> hold on, let's hold on. Li- <laughs> let's go. You got to give me at least one here. I read my life for you. A life without love is like a tree without blossoms and fruit. <laughs> With a heart at the end. Yep. Uh, I think I have that tattooed somewhere. Yeah, maybe. the next one is, I need to stop eating. This is ridiculous. Ooh, here's <laughs> a good one. I think the only reason people hold on to memories so tight is because memories are the only thing that change when everybody, or don't change when everybody else does. I must have got my heart broken. I was just about something. to say, how long ago was this in Jamie's that life? That was six years ago. Six years ago. What was your life like six years ago? You were in high school. No, nope, you I were in college. in college. Good Lord. What's yeah. the month right now? Feb- Today is March. I think I broke up with my high school boyfriend in January of this, of like six years ago. Bye, Felicia. Mm, two years ago, I went for a run. Oh. Hasht- hashtag wish me luck. Last time you went for a run. <laughs> No, I'm sure you ran at least then. Yeah, I tried on what day was that? Monday? And oh, that's I right. Blew you said over. you got blown off a bridge, basically. Yeah, I couldn't like... breathe. I was like, <gasps> I'm trying to run. Oh, well. It was awful. Happens to the best of it us. It was terrible. But uh, I... Yeah, I, I always find it funny, though. Go back and check your Facebook memories for the day as well, too. Anything good for us, definitely comment below. I, I always love hearing that, that stuff from people being like, what did you do today? And I, I go back and I, I chuckle and... Most of the time I was complaining about, you know, like working or eating or whoever girl I was dating at the time being like on the phone with whoever. Like, wasn't that like the, do you, I, do you yeah. remember that back in the day? Like people would post on Facebook, be like, like doing this, seeing this, text hanging me. Out, hanging out with Calvin. Like, yeah. It's like, yeah. and then, no you know, and then, and then it'd be like dot, 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 like text me, smile on the face. Be like, if you're hanging out with somebody, I'm going to be yeah. rude and text you. One of mine was just like eating with and then like tag my friend chad eating with chad yeah okay jamie no one cares uh this is some breaking news here on the nfl free agent side of things the packers will re-sign nick perry according to multiple reports uh he as we heard from bill has a career high in tackles of 52 sacks 11 in 2016 so bill has now been void as a potential source because he was wrong no nothing wrong (laughs) i love i love bill bill was was a lot of fun but (laughs) nick perry apparently re-signing club and all to the packers uh, for, for a couple more years. I haven't seen no details on how long the deal is, but um, the NFL today is a lot of the more, a lot of the Bruce sports shows today are going to be very NFL heavy today. So if you don't like the NFL, sorry, not sorry. It's basically NFL Christmas today, aside from the Super Bowl with free agency being wide open. So a lot of exciting things that we're going to talk about. But anyway, we were going to throw it back, Jamie, to a time uh, what are we, where, where are you throwing it back to? I don't know if we are throwing it to... 1936. Holy cow. Yep. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. I remember when. Do you? Uh, no. Uh, Babe Ruth turned down his offer with the Reds to make a comeback as a player. And uh, there was no punctuation at all in there, so that was hard to read. Hashtag but, no grammar. Yep. Um, the rest is Anything not- else? Anything happened like this day in like the world? Mm. Those are always fun, like, you know, King Louis the Fourteenth no, executed his 20th nothing wife. Nothing exciting happened on this day. A lot of... No hashtag 1904, Lester. Brandon Lester Patrick. Oh, Here, Brandon see. Lester's Patrick. I got, I got, I got some stuff. Yeah, I get emails daily from, oh. the, uh, from onthisday.com. Yeah, that's what I'm on right now. So, nothing exciting. 1522. You oh, I didn't get there. looked over that. Martin Luther begins preaching <laughs> his sermons in German in the German city of Wittenberg. Very, very big thing. 1776, the publication of the influential economics book, The Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith was released. Everybody remembers that day. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 1933, U.S. Congress is called into a special session by FDR beginning its 100 days. And today also in 1961, Soviet flight Sputnik 9 carries and returns a dog named, I'm not going to try this. Uh, try it. Chernushka? 
Shernushka. Sh- we'll What's the that. dog's name? I think so. Or Blackie, apparently. Oh. Uh, frogs and a guinea pig into orbit. Sounds like a sounds like a I feel real. Like Peta would have a real heyday with that. Be like, how dare you? I think they that. did not sign the waivers. Yeah, exactly. There was no paw print for Sh- no, Shabushka or whoever. Blackie. Blackie, <laughs> and guinea pigs and the frog. So that's this day. I'm throwing it back actually to baseball because everybody knows I love baseball. Uh, on this day in baseball history uh, is when the Tampa Bay Rays organization was founded and was awarded a franchise back in 1995, I do believe. So all my infinite baseball knowledge is coming out at you guys. So move over. And he claims he doesn't like baseball. I don't. <laughs> it's a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy going to games, okay? I do enjoy going to games. But aside from that, that's about as, yeah, that's about it, basically. Uh, Julian on Facebook, sa- or Robert says on Facebook, that if he signed Tony Romo, I would put pads on him like the kid from Little Giants. Yes, I completely agree where he has pads like 12 sizes, too bigger than him. Um, Aaron also says that uh, he's eaten guinea pigs before. Um, one time? <laughs> so I used to have this friend Kayla in high school, and she had like five guinea pigs. And she would always come over for dinner to my house because she was my best friend. And my dad would make this. I talk about my dad a lot. Um, what up, Ken? I would make this, or he would make this, like, rice and chicken casserole thing. I don't know. Yes. So the first time she came over, he told her it was guinea pig, and she cried and refused <laughs> to eat it. And then eventually realized it was just chicken. Uh, everything tastes like chicken. Though. That's what I've heard. Like, any right. sort of exotic meats taste like chicken. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Uh oh. Who said something? I feel like somebody just said something on Facebook. What's going on? Uh, what did I miss? No. No? Did I miss something? Uh, I don't know where to go from there on that one. All right. So, uh, you look at the sports world overall. Uh, of course, NFL free agency is a big deal today. Uh, we're probably going to see a lot of hashtag guest drama, Jamie, as well, too. Yeah, probably. I, as the day goes on, I don't, still early. They're all in their hot tubs right now, still. Yep. So, partying with Ted. Uh, do you have a hashtag guest drama moment from the week thus far or hashtag guest drama from the show thus far? Anything Bill did or said or in general what we've been talking about today? You always ask me that question and I never think of it until it's now. It's on the and schedule I weeks know in advance. I get nervous. No. I think the hashtag guest drama for me today all centers around what Tony Romo does. Okay. I think there's going to be a lot of hashtag guest drama because people are going to be all about where Tony, Tony Romo is going. Is he going to Denver? Is he going to just – Are you Team Denver? What are you – yeah, I think I, I don't like Tony Romo, but if he goes somewhere, I think Denver makes the most sense because at least they if have he a, does not retire. Yes, which I don't think he will. Right. Even though I think he should. Okay. What I think and what I actually believe are two do- totally different things, right. of course. Gotcha. You know, that's yeah, basically. So that's my that's my thing. I think everybody's going to be hashtagging yes drama about Tony Romo today, but also people are going to continue to do the whole hashtag yes drama with Timmy T based off of his terrible first major league at bats where he went 0 for 3 he got hit by a pitch so he did get on base at least once but uh yeah doesn't that, count that was the only part of the game i watched i like turned the, we were out for lunch i looked up at the tv he got hit with a ball and i uh was not disappointed <laughs> you're like oh well that's about right yeah okay i've i've stalled for you long enough what's your hashtag yes drama moment oh, I didn't. What have you been doing with yourself? Yeah, I don't know. Reading. Reading? This isn't, you don't just pull up the Reader's Digest while we're, while um, we're on the air. I don't know. Caleb yeah. disagrees with me, and so does Ian. They both say Houston makes more sense for Romo. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I think Denver. I, I guess I don't know what to say to that. You think, you think Denver? You think uh, not Houston? Hashtag I, no, Houston, well, never Houston? I think that, I think also a lot of people are saying that, like, Okay, like we've been talking again, age is a thing, whatever, but Romo still has some years left in him. Age is just a number. If he, <laughs> if he just stops getting hurt, and I think, you know, you said you, he's got a great offensive, like a great defense, like mm-hmm. they just need a great quarterback, and Denver's hot again. So that's true. Maybe they just need a good coach. Uh, and yeah. Not, you know, a good mentor. Everybody. Maybe that's all it needs. Maybe. All right, uh, some of the other big deals that have taken place really quick here. Kenny Stills re-signs with the Miami Dolphins, which will be a big deal for them. Um, Andre Branch re- also signs with the Dolphins. Brandon LaFell si- re-signs with the Bengals. Marquise Goodwin, uh, wide receiver to the 49ers. Um, 
Dwayne Allen got traded to the Patriots, which is another big deal. Patrick DeMarco and Mike Tolbert go to the Bills. I'm sure Tanner's happy about that. Barry Church, sounds like a country singer, goes to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Doesn't that sound like a country singer, Barry Church? I'm going to see Barry Church tonight, I think, maybe, because who is the country singer? Is it Eric, Eric Church. Eric Church, that's what it is. Pierre Garçon is going to the 49ers. Brian Hart of the 49ers as well. Uh, Chandler Jones gets a huge deal from the Cardinals. Tyrod Taylor stays in Buffalo. Vernon Davis resigns with the Redskins. And um, nothing else exceptionally exciting. We talked about Brandon Marshall to the Giants yesterday. So that's really the, the main rundown of things. And as we just heard as well, too, it sounds like Deshaun Jackson is signing with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which is kind of a cool thing. And then Nick Perry also is going to resign with the Green Bay Packers. So Packer fans, uh, hashtag yes, hashtag no. Got to give us that. Give us the lowdown on your Nick Perry thoughts on that one. Uh, it's been a great show, Jamie. It has. I got some drama. Yay. What's uh, your drama? Biggie died today, who's 20 years ago. Who's Biggie? Like Notorious B.I.G. Baxter. Jamie, you're, you're, you're darker than I am. Oh, my goodness. I, I was homeschooled. I was sheltered. I don't know what, who Biggie I'll, is. I'll, we'll play some of him once we get off the air. Why, what did he do? He's got this gross movie. I mean, if you're a fan of him, it's really good, but it's just gross. There's a lot of boobs. Uh, I mean, if you're into, ra- that, if you're into ra- that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. He's just a rapper that died. I don't really know much about him. That was my drama. I thought you would know who he was. I don't know who that is. I Maybe do. that's your yes drama moment is that I don't know who Biggie is. <laughs> All right, well, folks, uh, a reminder for all of you, of course, uh, continue to share this uh, episode as well, too. If you loved what Bill had to offer us about the Brewers and the Packers earlier on, go back and check out the full episode by headed to our website, brewsportsnet.com. You can also follow us on Facebook. Uh, get the notification tab up there, just going and, you know, say, get notifications when Brew Sports go live. That's a good idea. Your life will be progressively better each and every day by you doing such a thing. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at BrewSportsNet, hashtag BrewSports as well, at Baxter Colburn, at Jamie underscore Evers, three E's. Don't forget about them. Uh, coming up next, it will be Bubbler Banter live right here on Brew Sports. Josh Scheibe, Ian DeMars, 9 a.m. Central Time live on Brew Sports. Bill will be back as well, too, so you can catch Bill with his hot insights and hot takes as well, too. Special thanks to everybody that commented. People were commenting up a storm today, so a huge thanks to that. Pretty sure that was inflated because everybody loves Bill from what I was gathering, so people were throwing comments. And, but he was also just a really smart guy as well, too, so the insight that he was dropping, people were like, oh, give me more, Bill, give right. me more. So a special thanks to everybody that was – usually we go through and thank everybody, but because we ha- – this is a good problem to have, but because we have so many different people that were commenting today – we're so popular. We're just going to go like a, a blanket, like, thank you, sort of a thing. So uh, if you like what you saw today, of course, invite your friends to Brew Sports as well, too. Go to our Facebook page, hit that little invite my friends, and go do 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 with the invites. So that's what I usually do. I'm just like do 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 I even make the sound People as well, People hit too. decline. You're like, uh-uh, invite like, again. Invite again. Be like, what do you mean? <laughs> my mom needs to stop hitting decline. She loves me. All right, uh, Jamie, we'll see you back here tomorrow. Is that right? I'll for be here. A- for a Friday, a, a fitness Friday as well, too. Uh, Morgan Brill is going to be joining us, one of our fitness correspondents, to give us a little little bit of a fitness tip uh, in our second segment. So we'll be excited to welcome Morgan. It'll be Flashback Friday as well, too. Maybe we need to start pulling, like, old pictures of Baxter and Jamie for Flashback Friday. Because I know we try to, like, review the week in the sports world by doing Flashback Friday. But maybe we need to also share with the world who Baxter and Jamie used to be from I'll back I'll see what I can dig up. I love it. She's Jamie. I'm Baxter. We'll see you guys next time on The Morning Brew. Have a great rest of your morning and rest of your day as well, too. We'll see you next time.